Hitting that high risk, high reward shot is an unmatched feeling in FPS gaming. A sniper is a crucial role that not everyone can fill, and I want to help you get better. Hi, I'm the technician. I've been playing shooters for over a decade, and I want to show you what I've learned from playing a multitude of games like Call of Duty, Apex Legends, and Battlefield. This video is designed to break down the fundamentals of sniping and increase your chances of making those high impact plays when you get online with the boys. The first few things I'm going to talk about apply to mouse and controller with a few niche things at the end that will only apply to mouse and keyboard. The examples I'm mainly going to be using are in Call of Duty Warzone, but they can be carried over to other games as well. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So it really all starts with what sniper you actually choose. So in most games, there's some snipers that have a slower ADS but longer range, and then vice versa. They have a shorter range but a faster ADS. Now in Warzone, as of right now, you basically have two choices, the XRK and the CAD. The CAD is for long range, and the XRK has a shorter range but a faster ADS, which just got buffed, by the way. So you want to pick the sniper that complements your playstyle the best you can. So after you choose what sniper you want to use, the next thing we need to look at is Bullet Velocity, and this is going to set you up for success. Okay, because bullet velocity is going to determine how fast bullet travels from the rifle to the enemy when you pull the trigger. There's a thing called hit scan, right? And hit scan is considered to be anything over roughly 1,100 meters per second. That's up to interpretation, but it basically makes leading shots a lot easier. And we're going to talk about leading shots in a minute. So this build of the XRK Stalker has a bullet velocity of 1,300 meters a second, which makes it incredibly easy to use. Uh, if a lot of you guys are OG to Warzone and you remember the SPR when it first came out, I think in 2020. That gun was insane. I mean, it was it was literally it was literally hit scan. So this thing was literally a laser. It was it was so hard to adjust to different sniper afterwards. That being said, once you do pick your sniper and you get used to a certain bullet velocity, you're gonna want to stick with that gun. And I'm gonna tell you why. If you change snipers frequently and you never really get comfortable with the velocity and how far you need to lead your shots, you're gonna miss a lot more. So once you pick your weapon, stay with it. So I know I've mentioned leading your shots several times already, and it's time to dive into that. So what this means is play placing your crosshair in front of an opponent, by the time the bullet reaches them, it'll connect. And this is based on how fast the player's moving, if they're parachuting, or if they're on the ground moving horizontally. Now, it's obviously much easier to hit an opponent when they're running around the ground than if they're falling off a building, jumping in the air, or parachuting, right? So, because you only have to worry about the horizontal, right, and not the vertical. Now, that being said, if you ever see a parachuting player in Warzone and you're able to take a shot, I always take that shot because, because every shot that you don't take, you miss. You know who said that? Michael Scott, Wayne Gretzky. All right, so we're starting to lead our shot Shots. We picked our sniper. We're getting used to the bullet velocity. Now we're going to talk about where to aim. So when you're just starting out, you're going to want to aim for the chest. Okay, that's the biggest. That's called center mass. It's the biggest part of your opponent. This gives you a higher chance to actually hit them as opposed to aiming for the head and missing most of your shots. The headshot obviously gives you the most amount of damage, but you'd rather put some damage in than no damage at all. If a squad's attacking me or we're attacking another squad, I pick the enemy that isn't moving at all. So if they're mounted on the side of a building or they're just standing in a road shooting at me, I want to increase my chances of putting out damage and not always take the high risk shot so after you get pretty consistent hitting your shots then you can start aiming for the head so i know you guys knew this part was coming it all comes down to practice right practice 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 makes permanent without practice you're not gonna get better at anything now this doesn't mean you have to load up shipment with bots you know in a private match but what it does mean is whenever you're waiting for a match to load Get in that fire range and start quick scoping targets. All right, go to the dummy settings, put it on three plates, and then just aim for each head and practice switching to the targets. Slide around, jump corners, everything you can do that you're gonna replicate in game. Side note, to skip the reload animation, you can actually just re-equip the loadout and it'll just give you the initial, you know, when you charge your rifle. So it'll save you a little bit of time. A good habit to develop is to hit the focus key. It's shift for me on keyboard to steady your aim whenever you ADS. That key, that counters some of the aim idle sway or whatever the hell it's called. That way your crosshair gets right where you're aiming. Also, another obvious way to practice is you go into multiplayer. So if you're mainly a Warzone player, you need to go into multiplayer and use only a sniper. Now you're gonna be prepared, be prepared to die a lot. Forget about your KD, we're playing for the long term here. All right, and then the third way of practice I use is Aim Labs. Now this is a free program on Steam for PC users that help you practice your shot and get a high number of reps in a short amount of time. Now there are aim trainers for console, I'm just not aware of the names. So now let's talk about in-game settings, okay? So I know there are a lot of guides out there talking about the best sensitivity, so I'm gonna be brief. With mouse, you actually wanna measure how far your mouse moves to do a complete 360 in-game. Now, this way you can transfer your sensitivity that you're used to from any other shooter, right? 
So ideally you want this number between 25 and 40, five centimeters for war zone. Yay, metric system. Tactical shooters will be less and movement shooters will be on the high end. This is typically the range that most pros use. I personally use between 28 and 32 centimeters. Now for controller, best way I've found is you wanna aim at a specific object, strafe back and forth, and then whatever sensitivity you can hold your crosshair on the target is the one you should choose. Most pros are around 6.6 six or 7.7. Seven, seven. You can also adjust your ADS sensitivity down a little bit, fine tune your accuracy. Okay, so speaking of settings, now we're gonna talk about computer settings. So you wanna make sure your input device, whether it's controller or mouse and keyboard, is actually sending the signal fast enough so you can time your shots correctly. So you wanna look into overclocking. You can use DS4 Windows if you're on controller for PC. There's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how. It'll basically increase your report time. All right, and we'll talk about that in a second. So with mouse, you're gonna download whatever program came with your mouse, whether that be Razer, Synapsys, G-Hub, uh, the Lamzu utility and make sure your polling rate is at least a thousand hertz. So what this means is the device controller mouse sends the positioning or the clicks to your computer 1,000 times per second processing. This means the computer is checking if you fired your weapon or, or changed your aim position 1,000 times per second. So that's gonna decrease your input latency. I personally use the Lamzu Atlantis 4K Mini with a polling rate of 4,000. I use it on about 2,000 because anything higher I found requires more CPU usage. And while we're on the topic of devices, your monitor is very important. You want a refresh rate of at least 144 hertz. If you're on console, get rid of that TV. Man, uh, the the input latency and the render latency is going to be so low. You you are leaving a lot on the table. If your PC can't handle outputting 144 range for frames, you're going to need just upgrade. Now this is a huge rabbit hole to go down, but high refresh rate monitor. That's what you need to go for. So the next few things I'm going to talk about is specifically for mouse users. Now your posture is very important. You want to be able to replicate it every time you sit down, so you can develop consistency and you're less likely to develop any kind of repetitive strain issues. I'm an old man. Trust me. You want your arm your forearm to be parallel with the floor, shoulders in a relaxed position, sitting straight up. You might have to adjust your chair or desk to achieve this. Next is the mouse pad. You want to start with a cloth mouse pad that is fairly rough so you have better control and you have better uh, stopping power, I believe is what it's called. Now there are glass pads out there such as the sky pad, which is called, I think, the wall hack now. But they have a learning curve and are better suited for tracking. So I would use that for more a game like Apex with a higher TTK. I personally use the SteelSeries QCK. And then also make sure you clean your mouse pad, you nasties. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you sticking around. If you have learned something of value, please do drop a like. And to make it much easier to find the channel, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you in the next one.